Our next presenter is from Long Beach, California. His name is Scott Wayman from Kangaroo Time. Scott, come on up. Good luck. Thank you. Thanks. Watch the timer. Hi, my name is Scott Wayman. I'm the founder and CEO of Kangaroo Time. I'm an experienced entrepreneur with a, with a massive win in vertical SaaS. And I like to start with a story I tell about recruiting our CTO. I went to him, explained the business, and he said, sorry, but this is too small of an opportunity. Luckily, I was armed with data and was able to win him over, but I think it's important for me to educate you. The world of early education is a massive business and it's growing. And it's a business that's been largely ignored by technology. The revenue cycle alone is extremely dynamic and requires lots of labor to tend to. One of the problems is the most experienced employees in this business get promoted out of the classroom and into the administrative suites where they spend all of their time. And the reason for this is one regulatory issue and these centers can be shut down or more importantly, a child safety issue can occur. And the classroom is pretty chaotic. These teachers have their hands full and they're re being required to document more and more. So any one of these many levers in these businesses, if compromised, can greatly compromise the business. And this brings about an excellent opportunity to disrupt this business. And we're doing something that's never been done before. We're automating the business and making the business part ubiquitous. We're automating the classroom and making teachers better. And we're hardwiring parents into the early education experience. And we're not doing this with small early education centers. We're doing this with the most sophisticated businesses in this vertical on the planet. We add artificial intelligence to the revenue cycle and completely automate it. So the day a customer spends up kangaroo time is the last day they spend time and labor in billing. We do it for them. Not only do we do their billing, we help them understand exactly where every dollar is at every moment so they can finally make better strategic decisions. We automate their entire HR paradigm, everything from payroll to scheduling and personnel management. And we eliminate thousands of pieces of paper each day at every center with our digital document manager. So we onboard new staff seamlessly and more importantly, children come into the school very seamlessly and we can understand the utilization paradigm and, and know exactly where they fit in each classroom. In the high stakes documentation, we are sure that it's done correctly. And we introduced this real-time location paradigm at these schools so they understand for the first time ever where every student is every moment of the day. And this really heightens the safety paradigm. We make teachers 10 times faster than they would be on paper with artificial intelligence in the classroom. So we're prompting teachers to deliver feedings, diaper changes, and learning goals when needed. And the teachers are doing less. And with our language processing engine, parents and families are getting more in this multimedia rich experience. Our parent app ecosystem is elegant and unique, and it eliminates all of the friction. And parents love the peace of mind because they can peek in and see pictures and videos each day. We've invented the safest exchange of custody paradigm in this business. We use facial recognition and geofencing. And curating the family members that can help in this effort, we've also automated that and created that. In the millennial payment experience, we've also presented this, and this is a delight to the millennial families that have children. This allows us to optimize the revenues, and it allows these businesses to work on the relationships and really focus on those. This is how we monetize. So every dollar that we process through the Kangaroo Time Gateway, we keep 1%. Our average revenue per subscriber is $780 per month. And we're telling a data and analytics story in this business that's never been told and making these businesses healthier than they've ever been. So health of a business, coming to Buffalo for Kangaroo Time represents being close to our core customers and a capital efficiency we could never achieve back home. 
We plan to get to 250,000 MRR in Q1 next year, grow to 3,000 centers in 2018, and provide 35 jobs in Buffalo next year. And we have a pledge. It's not a one-year pledge. We plan to be here for a long time. Thank you. Right on kangaroo time. Perfect. Thanks. Okay. Erica. Great. I have a question. Um, so first of all, I, I absolutely love the exchange of custody aspect. I think that that's a really important problem that needs to be solved and I can see that being a great way to get into customers. Um, but if we talk about the actual sort of unit economics of your business, so you're charging 1% of revenue. Um, you know, what is your actual cost of acquiring a customer and sort of your customer lifetime value, typical monthly revenue? So, so our LTVs, we wrote our first contracts on 36 month agreement. So our average revenue ARP Yes, is seven hundred eighty dollars per month. Um, we're close to about thirty thousand dollars LTV, but that's estimated. Our churn metric has been an amazing metric for us. We've churned three accounts out of two hundred in the last year and a half. We don't churn our customers. A lot of it has to do with the revenue cycle management component. So once you help a customer customer optimize their revenues, it's a very sticky value prop. Um, did I answer your question as far as LTV and... Oh, just and what it costs to acquire. So our CAC right? and our blended CAC metrics, they've been totally organic. So we've been hustling at trade shows. Our customer acquisition is very low. CAC payback is about 45 days for us. Great. Todd. Uh, so when you're going through the ROI analysis for child care centers, right. uh, what are you typically basing it off of? Is it increased customer success, parent happiness, uh, increased cash collection times, better working capital constraints? What, what sort of your leading value for saying why 1% of revenue is, is an effective investment? In the answer is time? yes. No, so, so our metrics with our customers, so the immediate, the immediate ROI, we're able to science the revenue cycle. So when there are late payments, we add automated late fees into the revenue cycle. So that enhances the, the revenues one to 3% immediately. So the acquisition of kangaroo time with just that right there is cost neutral. Now we're getting money to the bank 13% faster because our processing gateway is expedited. We do so much volume now, we have favor with our processing partners. The customer success metric has been, uh, and the uh, NPS for our customers has been great, and it's been tied more, not, not, to, um, not to some of the seamlessness that the app provides, but to things like pictures to parents. So parents are really delighted when they have this um, hard wire into the early education experience. Uh, but yeah, our, the customer feedback, the churn metric will tell you, our customers really love us. Uh, we're at a trade show right now, and we've had this uh, evangelical network effect. We've already gained 30 customers on the first day of that show, just our customers bringing in other customers. Sherilyn. Love that you offer all of these things, including medical and allergy alerts, um, but I noticed that it, it takes like two weeks to onboard. Yes. Um, tell me how you're gonna solve that problem, because two You sound like onboard. one of my investors. <laughs> Uh, so, maybe, by the way. so we're sciencing what we call the customer journey and shortening all that. The first thing we've done to shorten our onboarding customer journey from three weeks down to two is we built migration tools from all the incumbent platforms out there. So all the migration tools are built. We've started, and part of our move to Buffalo and building capital efficiency is expanding our onboarding and customer journey team. We need to specialize. So we have migration that's a really, it's, it's a technical specialty. Um, once, we, once we do certain areas of training, the system's very large. So there's actually six different trainings accounting for about seven different hours over those three weeks or two weeks. Um, we feel like we can get that down to one as we specialize the implementation team into segmentation of the customer journey that will expedite each of those steps. The goal is, though, we, we want to get uh, we want to get that down to a couple days. Josh, and we think we can get there. Just quickly, where's MRR today? So we're at about 120 today, uh, where we closed last month. Uh, booked, we're above 500, and we'll be implementing. Some of those are franchise deals that have a long tail implementation process with system migration, uh, but we are booked, and we'll middle of Q1 next year. We'll be at a strong 250. 
But that's transaction revenue, not MRR, right? That's it, it, we represent it as MRR, but but yeah, it's, yeah, it's transaction it's, revenue. Yeah, yeah. So just a question: just you talked about how your co-founder, my my mother-in-law runs a few daycare centers, so I definitely appreciate the pain point. But you said your co-founder asked about the market size, like how big this is. I'm just you know just doing rough numbers. You said seven eighty a month. Let's round it up to say thousand a month, right? Okay. You know, tw so twelve thousand ASP. Like, so how many locations you said are there that you think are addressable? Addressable about two hundred thousand in the U.S. alone. So We've already and you're including you're including child uh, like daycares. What, what are you putting in that two? Those 000? are just center-based care delivery models. So the independent hundred students or more. We, we don't even consider our TAM right now the the home child care market, which is about yeah. five hundred thousand centers. The 200,000 addressable are the big centers, the big delivery models in the US. We've already closed business in Australia, Canada, uh, so we're growing international. And, okay. and so, okay, but basically with the few hundred thousand, you're, there's, uh, there's some large mega players and then there's a lot of yes. mom and pops. It's, and so, I mean, the acquisition is gonna be a challenge there, right? Not really, we, we've we started, I, so I have an enterprise background. I built a SaaS company that that closed Johns Hopkins Mayo Clinic. We understand the enterprise cycles. We've already closed two of the larger enterprise businesses uh, and we're meeting with many, many more. The enterprise uh, value prop for us, we built the enterprise layer. It's the first one of its kind in early education software or early education platform. So we feel like we really have a first mover advantage there. Rodney. Sure. Have you thought about communities where there's a digital divide and how might that impact the parent to provider experience? Or what about communities where you know daycare may be subsidized? Um, so we've taken on a number, so we've taken on a number of subsidized care uh, delivery models. The key for us is working with local governments to ease the transaction uh, process because it's very disjointed. There are businesses that actually do that. Uh, in, the, in Australia, we built the interface to Centerlink and it's been a great learning lesson to work with the state of New York or the, the, the different communities. Uh, we will go after that business. That business is broken and there is margin to be made there and there is a sweet spot of a solution to be had in that business to, to streamline the delivery model. Well, reason is a follow up is when you, when you talk about under, I don't even like to say underrepresented anymore, under tap communities, yeah. your ability to get students on this platform or parents, you could also push STEAM content, like the entrepreneurs who were exposed, you know, the high school students exposed today, pushing out opportunities is... is I'm glad you see that. Look, our, 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 our opportunity as a company is to pull more people into our ecosystem than we could have ever imagined. As we invite families into our ecosystem, we thought we would maybe have two parents per child. We average about seven. The, the average primary parent enters our app about seven times per day. So the opportunities there for our centers to reach beyond their doors and really do some great things, it's big. Abby. So uh, our, our fund has invested in a very large LMS platform that's used from K-12 to uh, sec uh, secondary, higher education, all the way up to enterprise. So I, I know a lot about the industry. Um, and it is that the K-12 segment is probably the hottest segment there is right, right. now. Uh, so, so it's great that, that you're, you're focused on that. Uh, what are the, 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 the trends that we're seeing is that the education industry in and of itself is facing a lot of budgetary constraints um, and the thought of every teacher having a, a tablet running on it, uh, running software on it, um, is great to think about but sometimes it's not feasible. Um, how, it, how does the sales cycle work in, in, in your favor? So, so it, it's actually really interesting and it, it, there's some segmentation there, right? So owners and administrators want our systems at their schools because we provide so much inherent value in the revenue cycle and in the business. We've had to really get, get uh, precise when it comes to user interface science in the classroom and assuring that teachers do less in those environments. They're doing more if they're huddled over a, a tablet all day, every day. The value prop doesn't sing, right? It doesn't work. So the user interface science is very important. We allow them to do more with less. Um, we're using language processing that we've, we've borrowed a few things from my past startup. 
uh, they can create this great narrative with very little work for the parent. So I, I think the key is user interface science. And how long is your sales cycle then? So, so our deals come to us fairly, fairly warmly. Um, once we get a lead, we, can clo we typically close after about one demo, uh, so a couple weeks. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Good job. Thanks.